And it's uh, such an unbelievable day for us again to join with our patient and to remember every minute why we do what we do. We're here for the patient, we're here for you. We're here in order to celebrate life. The Advanced Heart Failure Program at University of Chicago is about 25 years old and it's really a very special program. Uh, and people always say, well, what distinguishes the program? And I would, uh, over the last couple of years, the real distinguishing features are our outcomes, which are some of the best in the country, and if not uh, the best in the country, and we really pride ourselves on that. I went in July 26 for the, the test, and right there in the, the room, Dr. Sayer, um, he told me that I need a new heart. So that was July 26th, so they put me in the hospital right then. And then on August 10th, uh, I got put on the list. And then um, two days later, on August 12th, uh, one of uh, my colleagues called the hospital and said that um, one of her, her uh, relative had passed away and that they wanted to donate uh, his heart to me. We got an offer. And I said, how is it possible that we're getting an offer? We just list the guy. And I said, no, near. This is a direct offer. This is going only to Brian. This is a heart for him. And I said, wow, how can it be? It was a heart that one of the teacher from Brian, Brian High School, one of her family members passed away. And she knew that Brian is waiting for the heart transplant and the family agreed to donate the heart for him. And it was a perfect fit. The donor family, uh, just how grateful I am. And not, not only for me, but for my, for my family, you know. Uh, obviously, I wanted to stick around and uh, see my kids and, you know, uh, be productive and, and effective in life. But, uh, my kids get to see me too. Patients who absolutely will not uh, take blood, even if it means death. And um, many programs will not uh, transplant or put LBATs in that patient population because they don't want that mortality reflecting in their statistics. Um, you know, we've taken on probably a more spiritual, kind of universal approach and said that uh, if these patients need to have therapy, then maybe we're the ones who can give them that therapy. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and um, I was a very healthy 47-year-old that um, was very active. I was active in my ministry. I enjoyed, enjoyed outdoor activity. Um, um, in fact, I was, before this all happened, I was getting ready to go snow skiing. The University of Chicago was actually on a list that we have that would accept ones like Lisa to do bloodless surgery. He was just so, I mean, really comforting. He was willing to do um, what, I, what I needed as, and respect my faith. So yes, transplant is about something that is spiritual, some, sometimes thing that I will never understand. It's written somewhere else. And even though I thought, and I believe other in the team, that she doesn't have the time, she knew inside of her, by the way, Lisa knew that she will be okay. You just get stronger and stronger. And then I look back and, and wow, it's like really, really, came a long way. They treated us like family, uh, and then when you were having the bad days, you know, they come in and give you a hug. Yeah, yeah. We, we got the, we they hit the They said 50% of the family could get it, and two of the four got it. Yeah. I didn't get my dad's blue eyes, but I got his they got, heart yeah. failure. <laughs> <laughs> one is Ron, one is Robert, one is young, one is older. The younger get the transplant before the older, so he's actually became the older of the younger. So this is a really wonderful, wonderful story. I was shocked too, because I came with them 
I knew he wasn't feeling good, but um, I didn't think he was that bad. You know, we, we see him in the hospital room and he's got the balloon pump going. And, and I'm like, holy crap, Rod, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? Well, the thing was that when he was in the hospital and he already got his heart, you know, and he's, I made the comment, I says, I'm kind of jealous. I says, look at that nice heartbeat. Not thinking of anything anybody would ever happen about that. Yeah, I remember that. Compared to my heartbeat. When you wake up, you know, it's you just sit there, they put you in a chair and you can just you just feel the heart so strong. Yeah. And it's just moving you. Yeah, that's what and, I was um, saying. It was just it's surreal, you know. You actually feel like you did before the disease was starting to get bad, you know. But in the end of the day, it's about continuing life and to continue to be alive. So for me, Lisa Whitley, the Ritra brother, Brian Clark, Sarah and the Rue, and all the people that sit here is about continuing life. That spirit that the program uh, brings that allows me to be able to uh, expand what I can do and help patients is what keeps me going. It wakes me up in the morning.